today I'm back out on the 2021 Aprilia Tuona. I've had this for the last week and a half actually. Had it slightly extended by Wheels Motorcycles. So massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles. Links below, check them out. This is their demo. By the time this video comes out, this bike will be back with wheels. So you can jump on this, ride this exact machine. And what a beauty it is. So this is part two of my Tuono V4 review. I did a sort of first ride video. Link at the top. I couldn't really give the bike any beans because it had 16 miles on the clock. Now we have over 500 miles on the clock. As you can see, I've been enjoying this machine <laughs> for the last week and a half. So today, join me for my final ride on this bike. I'll give you all the lowdown on this machine, what I've discovered in my time with it, the pros, the cons, the niggles, the things I'm not quite happy with, and the absolute beauty and enthusiasm I have for this V4 motor. It is incredible. But before we do that, you know the routine. Chop C, roll the intro. absolute best thing about this motorcycle hasn't changed for 2021 the thing about this bike is this engine listen to this oh where's the tissues the best thing about the tuono is this engine it is it's, it's an absolutely, it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece, this engine. I mean, it's been around a few years. It hasn't changed much for 2021. It's as, I think it's exactly the same as the last, last years, apart from, you know, a bit of, tiny bit of tweaking for Euro 5. But there's not much changed with it. And there's good reason for that, really. There's nothing, nothing wrong with it. It is, it makes power everywhere. <laughs> And I mean everywhere. It makes power from idle. Idle up until silly speeds. So you've got power, dollops of dollops of power absolutely everywhere. It is unbelievable, this motor. Oh, watch out for the truck. It sounds, oh, it just sounds heavenly. It sounds like something directly off of the MotoGP grid. I don't expect the Aprilia MotoGP bike sounds any better than this. It's amazing. So the motor is the highlight of this bike. The motor isn't perfect though. I mean, I'm going to cover the downsides of this bike as well as the stuff I think is great. And one of the downsides with this motor is the low down it's not that smooth low down so if you take it right down the rev range you've got this i'll open the helmet so you might better hear and i mentioned this in my first review it's got this sort of on and off on and off throttle lash a little bit so if you're right down and i'm talking right down in the rev range sort of below 3000 revs it's smooth but it's just got this little bit of lash it's not brilliant, low, low down in the rev range. It could be a little bit of the Euro 5 mapping. Perhaps if you were to fit an aftermarket exhaust or the Aprilia uh, Akropovich on it and then get the Aprilia map, it would clean up all that low end fueling. But it's still got this little bit of lash in the transmission. And also it's not just the lash, it's the quick shifter and the blipper is not great below 5,000 revs. Actually, there's a chap who's just bought one of these. One of my subscribers sent me a message and he contacted Aprilia in Italy and they said the quick shifter shouldn't be used below 3,700 revs. So even Aprilia say don't use the quick shifter or blipper below 3,700 revs because you run the risk of actually you know, doing some damage to the gearbox. So that is very interesting. So quick shifter and blippering, I would reserve that for higher up in the rev range where the Tuono does come alive 
is when you are pushing on and you are using that quick shifter and blipper and you are throwing it around the bends. Well, bad points about this motor, the lash, the quick shifter and blipper isn't overly smooth and even when you do don't use the quick shift and blipper and you use the clutch it can still be a little bit like clunky when you're using the clutch as well it, the whole bike doesn't like going slowly <laughs> but that's okay because when you're riding it you won't be going slowly 4,000 revs instant speed instantaneous speed there are very few bikes which build speed like this. For 2021, the electronic Olins has been overhauled. This has got the EC2 Olins electronic system. I rode the last year's bike. I couldn't really tell much difference when I swapped between the modes and it was all very stiff. This one is much, much more comfortable. I think the whole bike for 2021 has been made a little bit more comfortable for the road the suspension's definitely a little bit softer it's definitely perhaps a little bit more flex in it maybe it's definitely not as stiff overall and i'd go as far as to say when you're really chucking it around a bit of fast road even in the sportiest setting all the suspension set to the sportiest it can get a little bit wallowy She's lively, that was accidental. She just comes up. My, I have got the wheelie control off, so that is partly my fault. But the way it delivers its power, it is a little bit scary sometimes. Woo! Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! Like that, it just comes up a bit unexpectedly. Ride this bike with the wheelie control off. <laughs> at your peril. So I mentioned wheelie controls off on this and uh, one of the best things about this bike is you have an individual map for this, an individual an indivi a map I suppose you call it, an individual setting, a user setting and that enables you to program it exactly how you like and what they've done on here they have separated lift control from traction control so I in my user mode I have disabled anti-wheelie but left the traction control on. Now they've done this with last year's bike but it never worked very well. But, you know if, if the wheel did start to come up even with the wheelie control off it would kill the power. You know you could play around with the traction control settings but the traction control would almost be a little bit of slip as it started to, wheel, started to wheelie and it would cut it. Well this one isn't like that. You can have the traction control really high the wheelie control off and they'll let the wheel come up and do as you will. So um, that's brilliant on this, that they've separated anti-wheelie from traction. Fantastic, and made it easy to use. It remembers, it doesn't default back to being on when you turn the bike on and off. It's just how your user mode is all the time, and that is that. Other maps, you have a touring mode, which basically flattens off the throttle response a bit. Doesn't get rid of that bottom end lashiness, but it does soften it quite a lot. It's also linked then to the suspension. So I've gone in and I've set a, a hard suspension and I've set a soft suspension. So you can basically tune it as you, we'll go into that a bit in the menu in a minute when we pull over and I'll show you. But I've basically set it as soft as possible for the tour map. And you can really feel the suspension does soften up when you have it in the soft mode. And then in the sport mode, it's, it's the sporty suspension obviously. And then my individual mode is also set to the sporty suspension. The one slight criticism is you cannot then modify these preset rider modes. You can't go in and adjust it and say, actually, I want a bit less engine braking in my sport setting. You can't do that. Sorry, I'm just going to wait for these cars to get away from my uh, favourite little hill climb. So you can't then go in and modify those. You, can you only have control to modify the individual setting, which is a little bit disappointing. On Ducati, you can modify all of the de factory modes it's also got three more tr two more track modes so I don't want to get rid on this guy it's got two more track modes but those are you've got to be in the track mode then so you don't have the proper dash so that's a little bit disappointing but 
one of the great things about this bike the way it handles it is a little bit heavy it's 210 kilos if you change in direction you know you can feel that weight a little bit but it makes it very very stable oh blipper very stable so yeah it's a little bit heavy you can feel that weight through the corners it takes a little bit of bar pressure to change direction but it's stable it turns it's very flowing comfort on the bike is pretty good the knees are a little bit bent as i mentioned in my first ride you can ride it for a couple of hours with no no problem whatsoever i do find the back of the bike feels a little bit higher so you can be sort of pushed forward into the tank a little bit and more so than on other bikes and you do have a little bit of weight on your wrist but not too bad perfectly acceptable it's a nice sporty naked position i would call it overtaking grunt let's just demonstrate what we've got here with these slow coaches fourth gear 4000 revs pin it five grand it starts to really build it just barrels along loads and loads and loads of grunt let's be having you <laughs> you'd look down and you go what how can i be going that fast already on a straight four engine you've got to purposely want to go fast you've got to wind the throttle line you've got to make a conscious decision that i'm going to go fast down this bit of road on this there's no decision the bike's made that decision for you okay let me find someone to pull over i'll get the decent camera out and i'll just walk you through some of the beautiful features of the tuono v4 yummy so there she is the 2021 aprilia tuono v4 factory also for this year the factory has not one piece of carbon fiber on the whole bike normally with the factory you'd expect a bit of carbon but plastic okay the old one always had a plastic mudguard but plastic infill panels plastic mudguard for an 18 and a half thousand well, 18,100 pound motorcycle i would like a little bit of bit of carbon you know just a, a mudguard or trim piece but no not a not a not a not a bean this is where they say the wings are just in here they're they're so small they're not really wings are they but uh, just a little bit of start this gives it a little bit more girth which is no bad thing i could use a bit more girth for this year the belly pan has also increased in size it was only like a little half-hearted attempt at a belly pan on last year's bike it's got like a full belly pan this bike is becoming more and more fair less and less like a naked and more and more like a sports bike really so it is really a fully fared bike it's only this little gap here <laughs> where you don't have any fairing new for 2021 is the swinging arm the swinging arm has also been updated not the swing arm the swinging arm it's the same as what's on the rs 4 it's like an underslung sort of moto gp inspired swinging arm i guess it makes it a bit more rigid does it but i would say the feel from the bike for this year is it feels a little bit softer so maybe it's just the suspension is softer but the actual chassis is more rigid i don't know but my overall feeling is she softened up not stiffened up the tailpiece still has that unmistakable sort of rsv4 tuono look with the little fin sticking up i love the rear end of this bike the seat is also red but that does come with its own problems because it gets a bit mucky and you can see it's a little bit mucky here as well so the suspension as i say is fully configurable so in my a1 there's three settings in my a1 setting this is how I've got things set. So nice and firm. So front firmness, rear firmness, brake support. So I like the way they've caught, they've named it so you can sort of follow it. It doesn't just say like compression, rebound compression and all that. It tells you brake support, acceleration support, and mid corner support, steering damper. You can also adjust how, how stiff you want the steering damper as well. So that's for the A1 settings. In this screen is how you configure the maps per user so you can adjust so i can only adjust the user mode i can't adjust touring i can't adjust sport which is a bit of a shame i'd like to be able to adjust that because you can do things like on here 
Aprilia engine management, which is the map basically. So one is the most aggressive map. Engine braking you can also adjust. So I've got that just set on, on one. Um, but you can see the sport, it's on two. Traction control, you can adjust those on the little buttons on the switch gear anyway. Wheelie control, off. Launch control, you've got the launch control. I've not even played with the launch control. I don't intend to either. Uh, ABS mode you can adjust and you've got the active track. So that's what suspension mode fits in with each of those settings. In the manual mode for the suspension, it goes into a bit more conventional detail. So, you know, front compression, front rebound, etc, etc. No preload. Preload is still on the adjusters. This is just compression and rebound is all that's adjusting here. The only thing you can configure in these preset maps is what suspension you want. So ASC, that's, that's automatic three. So I want automatic three for the touring mode because that's the, com the one I've got set as the comfortable one. So you can flip through and change what you want for your suspension with these settings, but I don't think you can change any of the other information. Let's give it a little tickle. I did promise you a bit of a tickle on this bike and I can tell you what is great on this bike and what they've spent a lot of effort doing is the electronics. Big changes to electronics on this for this year and uh, they're good. Oh, she's quick. That front wheel glued to the ground, absolutely glued to the ground. Without it coming to the old bike, the wheel used to come up and it would bounce up and down and then it would cut the power. Full throttle on the gas, wheelie control on level two, traction on level four. It puts it all down. The front wheel did not lift, the, lift off the ground. It, it held back a couple of times a little bit but it didn't cut and go and cut and go like the old bike used to. So there's a massive, massive improvement with the electronics on this bike for 2021. So let's come out of sport. Let's go for a bit of uh, bit of touring, touring mode. Suspension is now softened up a little bit. You can still feel the road. It sort of softens up. It gets a bit more bouncy, you know. It throws you around a little bit more over the bumps. It's definitely more comfortable without a doubt. And it is quite nice, you know, once you finish going fast, you bang it into the tour mode and just chill a little bit. But you can't still chill too much. It still wants you to go quick, even though the engine response has changed a little bit. I'm being a little bit critical, I guess, of this bike. I mean, this is the ultimate Super Naked. You know, for me, this and the Super Duke are the two top tier super naked you know it's an eighteen thousand pound bike you've got to be critical with it and i'm reviewing this you know with a, a thought to perhaps buy one of these you know so this is different to a lot of my other reviews in some respect because this is a bike i may end up owning one day so i'm being very critical and pointing out everything that occurs to me and would affect me if i was to buy one of these a lot of people say oh i don't have an april they're, they're too unreliable you know, the valve checks and all that. I did a bit of research. The Tuono, the engine is pretty reliable. There's no problems with valves. 12, what you do have to budget for is a 12,000 mile uh, valve check, which can be pricey. It can be about 500 quid to do the valve check, because these are, and the RSV4 is even more critical that you get the valves checked on the proper schedule but the Torona is not quite as critical because it doesn't rev quite as much. The valve checks are about 500 quid and they're 12k service intervals, 12k inspection intervals on the valves and they will be quite expensive to do that. So budget 500 quid for that. Fuel consumption is a thirsty beast. It is a thirsty beast. It holds 18 and a half liters of fuel, but ridden hard, you'll get just over 100 or so miles. So uh, but yeah, the fuel consumption is quite high. If you ride it a bit more gently, you get a bit more, but you'll never get a great deal. You know, it's, it's a thirsty bike. But that sound, that V4 performance, comes with some downsides. One thing worth mentioning is Wheels Motorcycles, who lent me this, they actually offer a lifetime warranty on all of their bikes, including Aprilia. So if you buy this from Wheels, they will give you a lifetime warranty, not just the two years you get for the manufacturer, 
for a lifetime warranty providing the bike is still owned by you and you have it serviced by them. So that's pretty amazing. So if you are worried about reliability on one of these, get it from wheels, get a lifetime warranty. Come on, my two owner doesn't like going slowly. So you get to, so as you change gear with the clutch, it's like that could be the chains a bit loose, but it, it, you know it's uh, it's it's not the it, it's a little bit it's not a super smooth machine to ride. I think you've just got to put up with the little four boys, four four boys, foil balls, foil balls. Is it? <laughs> you just got to put up with that with this bike. Four balls, four, 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 I don't know. You know what I mean. The bike isn't perfect, but it is incredible and I think if you want one of these you could put up with the little tiny little things you know the, the, the throttle response and the lashing that sounds you could put up with all that and the old bike was exactly the same I actually think this one is slightly better than the old one they, they have improved it they made it a bit smoother but it's still not absolutely perfect but I think it's just what this engine is like if you want it you're just gonna have to put up with it you know with its it's thirsty nature, but it just sounds so glorious. It's an incredible engine on this. And despite all my moaning, all my saying I can't control myself, it's too fast for the road, you'll lose your license or die. It's so good, it's so intoxicating. That might not that won't stop me buying one. <laughs> That's how good it is. It is an incredible Italian masterpiece and it is and for 2021 they've just softened it up a little bit to make it slightly better road bike I think and they've actually made it a little bit bigger another reason why I would never bought one of these before is because it's quite a small compact bike with this new fairing it's a little bit wider it's got a bigger belly pan it gives it a bit more presence and being a bigger guy you know it actually looks like a reasonable sized motorcycle now not a little middleweight so that is a big selling point for me if you're a big chap and I'm a big fatty six foot two and I fit on this fine so there we go guys that is it really the Aprilia Tuono to come on the channel I'm going to bring you a dedicated review of the new Speed Triple RS that'll be coming we've got the comparison review if I haven't done that already depends on the uh, on the schedule that's a bit of an editing job so that may take a little bit longer I've also taken the double R around uh, Brands Hatch at the California Superbike School last week. That was amazing, amazing that bike is. So that's a video to come. So if you're not, you know what to do, if you're not already subscribed, tick that subscribe button, ding dong that bell, and I will see you on the next video. Take care guys, cheers. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this. Oh, <laughs>